Hi, and welcome to another episode of Recover Loud. I'm Mike Paddleford, your host. I Recover Loud. Tonight's episode, we're going to be talking with Ashley Rennie from Sabatis, Maine. Ashley has used her program to go from felon to general manager and executive director. Let's see some pictures of Ashley's journey, and then we'll sit down and talk with her. My name is Ashley Rennie and I recover loud. So we're sitting here with Ashley Rennie from Sabatis. Ashley, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Um, I've been in recovery for a little over six years and I'm excited to share my experience, strength and hope today. I am the executive director of Journey House Recovery. Uh, we operate five um, low barrier houses across the state of Maine, um, kind of spread out Androscoggin County, Cumberland County, York County. Um, and again, we provide housing for people in recovery. Um, they are MAT houses, um, so I do that on a daily basis, phone calls, emails. Um, I talk to the program directors of each house. We have someone who is either living close by one of the houses or who lives in the house that does the daily operations. Um, I still attend AA meetings, do the step work. Um, my kids keep me busy, they're, you know, one of my yeah. biggest motivations to to keep doing it and you know keep living a, a happier, healthier life. Yeah, um, I just want to uh, talk about the the sober houses for a minute because um, it's very important. It's a great resource for our community. Um, what's the breakup? Are, are they mostly women's houses? Men's houses? Um, so we have three women's houses and we have two men's houses. Um, we have a women's and a men's in Sanford. Uh, we have a women's house in South Portland. And then we have a women's house in Auburn and a men's house in Lewiston. Okay. So like I said, they're pretty pretty spread out. Yeah, and you know, it, it's needed. There's not enough sober houses in the state. Um, there's not enough uh, detoxes in the state. Um, beds in general. Uh, are there any openings in any of the houses right now? Um, the Lewiston house stays pretty full. It's a smaller house. Um, we do have openings in Sanford right now. Um, we'll be moving the women's house to a bigger location um, come the beginning of April. So right now it houses five women and we should be bumping it up to around 10. You know, there are, I don't want to say there's enough men's houses, but there's more men's houses than women's. So Absolutely. Every, every time I see a, a women's house open up or expand, uh, to me, that's that's great. That's, Definitely, so, uh, we appreciate the work you're doing there. What else do you do with your time? Um, I work. I'm the general manager of Sabatis House of Pizza, um, which, ironically, you know, being a convicted felon, um, the owners are a lawyer and an Androscoggin County sheriff. So I like to mm -hmm. to share that because it's pretty pretty crazy from, you know, going from running from the law to now, you know, working side by side with sure. an officer. Um, I like to be outside. Um, my boyfriend and I go on his motorcycle a lot in the summer, um, bring the kids outside in the snow. They love to, to be outside too, so that's nice. I'm a very outdoorsy person. Um, like I said, go to meetings. Um, nothing like too crazy. I'm pretty busy all the time between the kids and you know the recovery houses and working on my own recovery and stuff like right. that. So try to get out when I can. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's it's amazing the things we get to do once we find recovery. For sure, um, and just enjoy doing, right. you know, and be present for for things like that. So, yeah. 
so yeah, it's, that's quite a story going from a, a convicted felon to a general manager and executive director. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what life was like back when you were getting arrested and, and spending time in jail? Definitely. Um, so I was 19 and I lost my father to suicide. Um, and about a year after that is kind of when everything started going downhill for me. Um, I had, you know, was hanging out with the wrong people and they're like, oh, here, you know, try this pill. And it was like the initial aha moment. I was like, wow, this is, you know, great. It takes everything away. All the, all the pain, the bad feelings. So just from that point, it was just, you know, off and running. I had tried, I mean, all of my 20s um, were running the streets, you know, getting arrested and all that stuff. Um, I tried, you know, a few times in between that to, to get sober and, you know, tried different programs. My family sent me to Florida at one point for, you know, rehab. I stayed down there for a year, did, you know, fairly well. I wasn't in the work. Um, so within two months of, you know, moving back to Maine, it was right back to, to the same, you know, yeah. song and dance. Um, so that was most of, most of my 20s. Um, I've been arrested, gosh, I don't even, more times than I can count on probably my hands and my toes. Like I said, just off and running. Um, I did pills for, for a long time and then couldn't find them one day, switched to, to heroin. Um, by the end of my using, I was, you know, smoking crack all the time too. And my last day getting high, I overdosed. I was in the vehicle with my grandfather. Um, and I had asked him if he could run into the store and get me cigarettes. So I did my thing while he was in the store because I felt awful. I was so dope sick. It was crazy. And I remember just pulling into the driveway because we were about 10 minutes from, from where you know we lived. And I fell out. And <clears throat> my grandmother, who was sick at the time, had Androscoggin, like home health, that would come in. And her nurse was supposed to come the next day, but she had called and said, oh, I'm in the area, someone canceled, can I come now? So her RN happened to be there. You know, my grandfather ran in the house, I can't, you know, wake Ashley up, I don't know what's, what's going on. So she came out and performed CPR on me a few different times. She'd get me breathing again, I'd stop. So she kept working on me till the paramedics got there and then they Narcan me three times. I finally came to in the ambulance. Um, they had called my mother at work and she, got into a car accident, rolled her truck into a ditch, trying to get to me. Wow. Um, so it was, you know, at that point, I had, I had been to jail, I had been on probation, I had, you know what I mean, been in some scary places, but not, none of it really ever affected me. You know, I'm just like, this is my life, and better get used to, you know, being in, in crappy places and doing bad things, because this is just who I am. And then that day was like, okay. You know, I almost killed myself. I almost killed my mother, you know, for that fact, so. No matter how low we think we are, we can sink lower. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and even with an overdose, you know, that, yep. that seems like it should be the bottom, you know. But I think that's the craziest part of telling that story of the day yeah. that, that I almost died is that my first instinct was to check my pockets yeah. to see if they had taken my stuff, mm -hmm. and they didn't. You know, my clothes were all cut and from them working on me. And when I got home from the hospital, I did stuff out of the same bag, but just, you know, did less hoping, which thankfully I didn't overdose again, but that was my, my thought process then. And right. I'm like, now that's so, so crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. To think that that was my biggest worry. Right, and you it, know? It, it doesn't even make sense. No, it know? doesn't at all. It's like, wow. Yeah, and you know, there's so many times, so many different things I can think of in, in my own journey that uh, I'm surprised I'm alive. Absolutely. You know, I'm surprised yep. that my children are alive. Mm -hmm. You know, I put them at risk so many times. Um, and, and I did things that could have led to the tragic end to so many other people. Mm -hmm. um, and by the grace of God, I'm still here, my family's still here, um, and I have this chance to recover. Um, and, uh, you know, because of that, you know, I'm able to help other people. You know, I'm able to share stories with, mm -hmm. uh, your story with, with a bunch of people, because these stories make a difference. Absolutely. Um, you know, we lost 636 Mainers last year. 
Um, the year before was, you know, 503, and the year before that was, you know, 316, I believe. So, I mean, the numbers are not getting any better, um, you know, but our efforts haven't decreased, you know. Um, Narcan is working um, at reversing an overdose. People's lives are being saved. Advocacy work is yep. working. People's lives are being saved. But it just doesn't feel like enough. Yeah. You know, so sharing these stories and, you know, e yours is a great example where Narcan was necessary. Mm -hmm. Narcan worked. And because of that, you know, we have you contributing and, you know, sitting in the position you're at. Absolutely. Um, and even just being in the community. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what's it like working at, at uh, the House of Pizza as a person in recovery? Um, do you share, do people ask you? Uh, do you share that with people? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty open and I've always been pretty open about, you know, my time in recovery and I, I get judged for it, you know what I mean? Or not my time in recovery, I guess my past. Um, but it's, I guess, the risk that, you know, I'm willing to take to, like you said, help save lives. And you know what I mean? It's the saying, if I can do it, you can do it. You know what I mean? Because I didn't think at one point that I could do it. And it's like even... You know, I detoxed in a sober house with no, you know, medication when I first came into recovery and I was still, you know, oh, well, I'll, I'll do this. It was more of, I was on like my third pro probation violation. Wow. So it was like my way to not go back to jail. So at first it was like, you know, I'll pick and choose what I want to do. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm not, right. I'm not going to listen to everybody. They, you know, they right. might know what they're talking about, but I don't know for sure if they do, <laughs> so. It was the same with me, you know. Um, it, it never worked last time. Right. I listened to myself, yep. you know. And finally, <laughs> when I was, you know, came to the conclusion that maybe I don't know as much as I think right. I Right, exactly. Um, you know, <laughs> I know a lot about the things I shouldn't know a lot about, <laughs> you know what I right. mean? Like, yeah, you know, and I mean, but that's that experience that we've gained in, um, you know, the darkest times of our lives mm -hmm. because we're able to share it today. Yep. Um, you know, it's effective at, at helping people. Yeah, so. and even saying that, you know, oh, I'm doing a recovery show. I have had so many people reach out, send me the link, send me the link. And I mean, everybody in my life is super supportive. You know what I mean? And like I said, it's something that I'm always willing to, to share and, and talk about because like we talked about before we started recording, if it, you know, saves or helps one person, you know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's such a, a huge thing. This show became a way to, you know, share the message with more than one person, and um, you know, having stories like yours make this show, you know, worth worth having. Um, so, what are what are some of the greatest accomplishments that you've had since entering recovery? Um, I would probably say my children, for sure. I think that's one thing that I am grateful for every day. Is I see so many people, you know, whose kids have seen things and, you know, and I can't imagine, you know, it's gotta be difficult not only to work on yourself, but have to rebuild, you know, a relationship with your kids and, you know, stuff like that. So I have m mass amounts of respect for, you know what I mean? People like yourself and, you know, your wife that pulled themselves out and, you know, have put their family back together, you know, and, I guess I always think about, you know, the day when I'll be telling my kids my story. You know, they're still pretty young now, almost five and two, but, you know, it is something that I'll share with them one day. So I would say them and work. I've always loved working in, in restaurants. You know, I've always been a waitress and a bartender and then got this opportunity and it was like, wow, you know, that's kind of crazy. Like it's, it's a small pizza shop and stuff, but it's still, it's big for me. Right. You know what I mean? And I, and I enjoy doing it. I enjoy the, the people that I work with and honestly just waking up every day and, you know, not having to think of how am I gonna get my stuff today? What am I gonna steal? Who am I gonna hurt? You know what I mean? Or, or whatever the case is, just being happy and healthy, you know? And I still have, have bad days, of course. Life still happens. But I have those tools now to be able to work through it without, you know, having to pick up a drink or a drug. And I think that's pretty amazing. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it always amazes me um, when I speak to somebody with, you know, six, years um, in recovery. Uh, a lot of people at that time think, well, I, I've already done the 12-step program. Mm -hmm. I did my part. You know, I, I don't need that anymore. Um, 
What keeps you going back to the 12-step program? I just, I know, I know now, like we were saying before, we, you know, know so many bad things before we come into recovery. And now I know so many good things and so many good things have come from not only being in recovery, but continuing to, to work, you know, do the work and work on myself. And, you know, I know that if I get that mindset of, you know, I can skip it this week or, you know, I'll get rid of my job at the recovery houses or, you know what I mean? I won't do step work this week. It turns into to weeks and then months and then years, you know, and I know, I know myself now and I know that if I do that, I'm not going to last very long. I'll be right back out there doing the things that I used to do. Yeah, and, th and that's what they mean when they say the slip happens before you yep. pick up a drug. Um, because it, it's, it's the, the mental uh, breakdown of it all. You know, the, the demons are starting to win again. Mm -hmm. You know, even the smallest victory for them, you know, can affect us. Absolutely. And, you know, allowing that um, over and over just, you know, to slide. To, and that's, that's why recovery is, is a journey. Mm -hmm. You know, we may have, in, in these 12-step programs, we start, you know, day one is when we put down the, the, the substance. You know, every day after that is the work um, yep. to change our lives so that we don't go back to the substances. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. And, um, you know, I respect people who, like yourself, go six years continually doing the work. Um, giving back to the community um, and seeing the value in in sharing your story um, because when we when we recover loud you know people hear it people get that hope they get the the resources um, and as you said if, if I can do it so can you and yep. you know uh, looking at you today people probably wouldn't guess I get that where, quite where often. you were at in, <laughs> yeah. you know uh, at your lowest um, you know but but we've got photo evidence of, yeah. of how low it was for you. Yep. And, you know, um, did you imagine when you were growing up that, you know, you were going to become a felon and you were going to be, uh, you know, addicted and that your life was going to go that far? No. I mean, I don't even think in my wildest dreams I could have imagined that I would have, you know, been doing some of the things that, that I've done. You know what I mean? And. It's my dad was an alcoholic and I'm so much like him in so many ways and I like to think that I'm kind of doing what he couldn't do. Um, I've not had the, you know, suicidal thoughts or, you know, anything like that. But as far as just my mom always gives me heck because she says I show no emotion and, <laughs> and yeah. stuff like that. So and that's, you know, how my dad was. But I think that like I said, I'm just doing, you know, what he couldn't do. And I think that's some of the, the drive that keeps me going too, because he was sober for, for quite a while, 16 years, and then picked up the drink again, and then two days later, you know, took his life. So it's... So have you forgiven your father? I have. It took me a long time, and I always blamed my using on that. Well, you know, my dad died, my dad died, you know, and I have a younger brother who also lost his dad, you know, and he's the one that actually found my dad coming home from school. He was 16 and he's a helicopter pilot and a plane pilot, was in the military, you know what I mean? So I always thought, like, why did I go down such a, a bad path? You know, he had it worse than I did and not that it's, you know, tit for tat or you had it worse and I, you know, had it better, nothing like that. Um, but it's just one of those things that it took me a while to, you know, we have the same birthday. I was definitely a daddy's girl, um, but I numbed myself for so long that I never, I never gave my chance, myself the chance to, to deal with it. You know, it just was always pushed way down as deep as it could go, you know. And like I said, it was my excuse for a long time to, to make bad choices. And it's now I see that that wasn't the reason that I, I kept using. I just used that as my reason, if that, you know, makes sense. But it's, I mean, it's, it wasn't easy. It's still not easy. You know, it's, it's my dad. But I've definitely come a long way and, you know, come to terms that he just wasn't happy and 
it's what he felt you know he needed to do yeah and I mean you you did describe him as an alcoholic um, so without knowing him and and you know being a sick person myself I can understand and see other people for the sicknesses they have mm -hmm. so even though their actions are you know may seem you know unexplainable unforgivable mm -hmm. um, you know knowing that they were sick and they suffered with something yep. um, that led to that you know it, it kind of puts it all into pr perspective mm -hmm. um, and you know it, it's we're gonna find an excuse yeah. um, and you know in the beginning of, of course you you weren't thinking that your life was gonna lead to to where it did right you just wanted to not feel that pain mm -hmm. you know and you know as a result of that um, you know, it led you down that road, and now in recovery, you know, you've been able to turn it around, and you're, you're giving back, and, you know, do you feel that, you know, forgiving your father was important for your recovery? Absolutely. It was yeah. a, a big part of that. Um, I think just dwelling on it, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like even the few times in between that I tried to get sober, it was, you know, I always, like, poor me, poor me, you know, made yeah. myself feel bad. Like, you might as well just go back to doing it because you're never going to get this, you know, type thing. And I think that it, it really was a huge part of my recovery. And not to say that, you know, when he passed away, that's why I started using. But I think that that also had a big, it was a big part of, of why. I just didn't want to feel those feelings. Right. Not that it was his fault or, or anybody else's fault, but I didn't, I didn't want to deal with it. Right. You know what I mean? And that was my way of not dealing with it, so. It was the situation happened. You didn't know how to deal with it healthily. Right. And you chose. And a lot of times we, we you know, misplace that mm -hmm. onto the person. Yep. Um, and uh, the only other question I have about that is, have you been able to forgive yourself? I have. I think, I mean, it took me a few years for sure, even, you know, after being sober for a couple years, but I have. I just know that if I, again, dwell on those things, it's going to put me right back to, to where I was. And I know that a lot of people, you know, like my family and stuff, those are the trust and the relationships and the forgiveness is all stuff that I had to earn back. And I've done that, you know, and that's, it's, it's a big thing. You know, my mom used to hide her purse or make sure she didn't have, you know, money laying around when, when I was over. And a couple months ago, she forgot her purse in my car and I brought it to her the next day. And it wasn't, you know, it's like little, little things like that. Yeah. I, I recognize, and it's maybe not even something that she recognizes, but I'm like, wow, you know, that, that's a big thing. Like yeah. that earning that, that trust back and, being able to, to have that relationship with my family again and them not having to, to worry if I'm gonna die or steal from them or, you know what I mean, what, what phone call they're gonna get next. Yeah, you know, we do strive for that, you know, the family healing, the forgiveness. Um, as you mentioned with, with my family, it was my children, you know, gaining their forgiveness and support. And we have been able to do it, but, you know, it didn't happen overnight. Right. Um, it's the constant work, the effort, um, proving ourselves mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times that's just you know for me it's proving it to myself right. and once I forgave myself I was able to forgive others and once I'm able to you know see my own progress mm -hmm. um, I can project that you know what I mean yep. I'm not uh, beating myself up over the stuff right. you know even though it, I've done horrible things um, you know I've done the work uh, necessary to to at least earn that forgiveness for myself. Yep. And, you know, that's what's keeping me, you know, going. And uh, so I think that's a, a really important thing. And I'm glad to see that, you know, you you have reached that. Um, Thank you. Because I think the work that you, you, you're you doing is, is valuable. Um, you know, Lori actually um, was impacted by your recovery. Uh, she was one of the first girls in the Auburn house. And, uh, you know, the lessons that she learned there mm -hmm. were valuable even today, you know. She taught me many lessons too. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we helped each other. Right, and that's, that's what how we this, do. That's how this works. Yep. You know, um, and and that's why you know just we say helping others helps us, and you know that's how you know we learn from each other um, things and experiences that you know we may not have gone through ourselves, right. but we see it 
in other ways and other people. And, you know, again, that's, that's the importance to recover loud because, you know, people need to know that, you know, what they're dealing with isn't, you know, they're not the only ones. Right. Um, you know, a lot of times we think there's no way that somebody has gone through something this bad. Right. And, you know, what we find out is, you know, it, it happens more often than we think. Um, people just stay quiet. Yeah. You know, so. My thing was always people don't know how I feel or they don't understand me, you right. know, <laughs> so, or they, they don't have it as bad as I do for sure. That was yeah. definitely my thought process for a long time, so. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's great sometimes that when we, when we turn it around, you know, we end up having it better than we ever thought we could yes. or would. For sure. Um, you know, I, I know the things that I'm doing today, uh, you know, I question whether I deserve it all the time, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's very humbling, you know, and, uh, you know, that's, that's my goal just to, to remain humble because, um, you know, back when I believed in the power of Mike, um, things didn't work out very well, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, you know, so I, I put my... I, I put my faith and my power in in a higher power, and uh, you know I just do what feels right, mm -hmm. you know, and, and making those those decisions. So, um, you know, for me, life today is is better than it ever was. Um, you know, I, I think uh, you you mentioned before that your life you're you've never been happier, um, and you know so. It's all thanks to our, our journey, our recovery mm -hmm. journey. Um, deciding to get away from that stuff brought us to where we are today. And yeah. the work that we personally put in brings us to the points that we're at today. Today we're going to have a little check-in uh, with Ashley and our director, T. Farr. Um, a check-in is a good way for us to become accountable uh, to ourselves and to others who may hear what we have to say. Um, it's not important so much for the other people, but for ourselves, when we say it out loud, you know, it, it becomes real. Um, so the way the check-in works is, um, you know, we're, we'll discuss something that may have happened good for us over the last week, and then something that we're looking forward to next week. Um, you know, maybe a challenge for us, um, or just something we're looking forward to. Um, T. Hey guys, I'm T. Uh, this week I have had a couple of job opportunities. Um, with Ryan Page and his wife Cynthia with Access Recovery Direct um, and also um, filming a documentary for my job, Good Shepherd Food Bank. And next week, the thing I want to accomplish is I'm going to be training to be a recovery coach. That's awesome. That's awesome. Be good yeah. for you. Yeah. Ashley, anything good happened for you this past week? Oh, let's see. I'm Ashley. Um, I would say I got to spend more time with my kids. Um, my work schedule wasn't as crazy, so for me that's something something good to happen. Um, next week, um, probably the same thing, hopefully spending time with my kids. Um, we have some new stuff that we're, we're doing at work, and um, we are going to be moving the women's house um, in Sanford, so a couple good things. Thanks again, guys, for watching another episode of Recover Loud. It can be seen on PMC. Channel 5 in Portland, as well as on our YouTube channel, Recover Loud. Don't forget to like, share, and comment on our posts, as well as hitting that subscribe button. Uh, thank you all, and we'll see you next time. Recover Loud. Recover Loud. Recover Loud. <laughs> Much more. So every time I call, you pick up the phone, and always reminding me that I'm not alone, and even when I'm scared and my feet are frozen, you help me keep it going like a semicolon. And every time I call, you pick up the phone, and always reminding me that I'm not alone, and even when I'm scared and my feet are frozen, you help me keep it going like a semicolon. So I'ma follow your steps for all of the way. I put my faith in you and walk on the waves, and if I stumble a bit and fall on my face, you come and save me with all of your grace, yeah Thank God